What's up guys, I am back again for another TV review. As I mentioned a few weeks back on my JarCast movie podcast, I was going to try out this new thing. I'd had requests about doing TV show reviews, never really done those, just done movie reviews, but I thought this was a good platform to just try and, you know, start a show from the start that was shorter, such as The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and give it a shot. And since this one's only six episodes, why the hell not try it out? If it takes off, I might do more. If not, no harm, no foul. So, with that out of the way, uh, here is episode four. My episode four review of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, what did I think? Well, let's talk about last week real quick. Or actually, before even that, I do want to say that if you've not seen this episode, there will be spoilers involved here especially concerning the ending. I'll try and keep them to a minimum. There's not a whole lot of spoilers in this, but in order to talk about this episode, we got to talk about that ending because that is a big, I guess, somewhat of a turning point, a possible turning point for the series. So just saying there will be spoilers, especially with the ending. However, if you're online searching stuff for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode four, you've probably already seen this thing that happens in the end. I mean, it's a very striking image, so much so that I almost used it in my thumbnail, but I tried not to be a dick about it. Even though a lot of people have been, I've seen that thing popping up all over the place, so before you even can read anything or hear anything, you see it right there. You have a pretty good idea what's going on. I had it ruined for me before I saw the episode, but it, it, I mean, it still was a striking moment and image on the show but we'll get right to that in a minute as i said there are going to be spoilers so if you just absolutely want no spoilers go watch the show come back and check out what i got to say then so let's talk about the last episode real quick i already talked about that check out my my thoughts on that on my episode three review however last episode was just kind of a wash i thought not a lot happened it was just it wasn't character development it wasn't story development it wasn't you know mindless action mcu action or anything it was just there. Stuff happened, but nothing of real consequence. There were a couple of little things, but not really 45 minutes worth of, of, of storytelling and TV show. And I was kind of disheartened by that. I was thinking, you know, first episode, I liked that they went a different way of just having, you know, a whole lot of character development. That broke the mold, I thought. Second episode, they ratcheted up the action some more had a bit more development, but, you know, they, they gave us a bit more action that we didn't have in the first one. So third episode, I was really hoping would really tell us more about this overarching story. That's not what we got. We really didn't get much of anything. So after that one, I was a bit kind of wondering, where's this show going? Let's see what episode four has in store for us. Well, this episode is better than last episode. Some stuff actually happens, and we, we get some more development in the story. We don't get as much in the overarching story though like what's really going on in this world we find out a little bit more just a very little bit more about the flag smashers i think that that's what they're the the villains are called the uh, super soldier bad guys uh freedom fighters whatever you want to call them and uh we 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 don't really find out much more than that except until the until the very end this episode was much more about a question there's a question that is asked by many of the people in the show and that question is the super the super soldier serum if it was available to you would you take it that's like a very important question in this episode um and i think it was a, it was done very well i like how they did that when they asked all the different characters what would you do if you had the opportunity to take this serum that would make you a super soldier like a superhuman being would you take it even though it could go the wrong way and 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 be bad for you and everyone's reaction to that 
And some people are just real quick to say, oh, yeah, hell yeah, I would without thinking about it. And then much less our, our main character, or not our main character, but the main person that this is directed at, uh, John Walker, I think that's his, the, the new Captain America. He he is is debating this question. We know this because the Flag Smashers have their super serum and, you know, they lose it. And it's all destroyed by Zemo, which is really the only thing he has to do in this episode, by the way. Can I, can I sidestep for just a minute and say Zemo was like a focal point of the last episode, the best part of that episode. And I really liked that character. I was, I I went in, in the end of episode two, when they said, Oh, Zemo's coming back or we're going to get Zemo. I was like, okay, so what? I mean, the guy did some stuff in winter soldier, but you know, how, what's he really going to do here? I don't really see it. But then last episode, even though I didn't care for episode three that much, and I thought it was kind of a wash, he was the best part. He was the most interesting part. And oddly enough, the two characters that I thought I would care about the least and be the interested in the least in this show are the two that I am the most interested in, and that would be Zemo and John Walker. I think his name is Walker. I keep wanting to say Walker. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's John Walker, the new Captain America. These are the two characters that I think are the the most interesting out of everyone. Bucky and Sam, they're I mean, they're fine. They're they're interest they're doing what they do, but they're not the most interesting part of the show. Zemo is and John Walker are. Um, Zemo, not as much this time around. He, he he didn't have as much to do. He was there, and things that happened in this episode happened because of him, and he needed to be there, but he didn't really have a lot to do. He was, just because he was in the room, it really wasn't focusing on him. He didn't, he was just kind of there. And, uh, I mean, some of the things that happened in this episode, like the Wakandians showing up, wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for him being there, but I just wish they had kind of had him interact a bit more than he did. He was kind of pushed off to the sidelines. It's like, I'm like, okay, we got Zemo. We showed you how cool he is. Now we're going to go do other things. Another part of the episode that I thought was pretty neat was how Sam goes and tries to talk to the leader of the Flag Smashers and try and talk her down. He doesn't just want to like go in there guns blazing. Everybody else does. He says, well, let me try and talk to her. Let's try and talk this person down. This goes along with them trying to sim- have us sympathize with these characters. I think that's really what the showrunners want. They want us to sympathize with these more or less terrorists because that's what they are. They're going around blowing up buildings with innocent people in them and committing these acts of terror and violence, and they want us to sympathize with them by showing us why they're doing it, kind of, and and also showing us just their human side. And honestly, I'm not really. It doesn't, I, I don't hate them, I get what the show's wanting out of them and from me, but I don't really sympathize with them as much. I I, I mean, I kind of see where they're coming from to a degree, but it's just the way they're going about it. I just, I just don't. It's not doing as good a job as I think the show thinks it is in having us sympathize with these characters. Um, there, I will give the show this much. It doesn't. It's trying to have interesting characters, interesting villains that aren't just two dimensional. But in doing that, it's almost like they are still kind of two dimensional because they're kind of one note. They're all. Like we're doing this for injustice. We're doing this for being held down. We're doing this for, in- and that's all. That, that, that's all they're about. That's all they do. There's nothing else to them really. It's all about that. Their entire life is about that. Nothing else. And even though, at first, okay, that was interesting. They're doing these bad things, but they're doing them for a kind of a noble, noble cause, I guess. The fact of the matter is, they're. Okay, they're not one note and saying, I'm a bad guy because I'm bad. I'm evil for evil, and I want to rule the world just to rule the world. No, they're saying they want to burn the world down because of injustice. Okay, great. Can you take it any further? But they don't. That's just where they leave it. I do wonder if that's the showrunners and the show writers being kind of nervous about, you know, putting the finger on certain things because if they do, you know, you can get flack from all kinds of directions then. I don't know. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they have to go down that road or go in that direction. But give us a little bit more about these characters. I mean, sure, they. Uh, let's see more than just that they are against these injustices and that's it. If you want me to sympathize with them, show me their human side. Show me their human quality. Show me who they are. And I don't feel like that's what we're getting. Um, so the villains here don't feel as imposing or as interesting as I think they'd like them to be. Now, 
That is if they remain the main villains. I don't think they are. I honestly think after the end of this episode, and I've kind of wondered this up to this point, that John Walker, the AKA new Captain America, either A, is going to end up being the villain of the show, or B, he will end up being a villain in later seasons or mediums within Marvel. I think they're building this character up to be the villain, and we see that in the end. And I'm kind of mixed on that. On uh, face value, yes. Holy crap. Because just let's say it. In the end, he takes the Captain America shield and beats a guy's fucking brains in with it because he's pissed off. And then we have that striking image of him sitting there holding the shield with the blood all on the bottom of it and the body sitting there and everybody's taking pictures of him because he just went fucking ham on that guy. That was great. That was a very striking image. That was great. I, I Not that I enjoyed seeing someone kill someone, but I liked seeing that. That was like... I understood why he was doing that. I sympathized with that character in that moment because his friend, his best friend and his brother in arms had just been killed in front of him by these characters, these these bad guys, these people he's trying to get at. And while he hasn't made all the right decisions, I think he's always had the best intentions at heart. So that happened and he went into a rage and he got the first one he could and beat it out of him, beat what he could out of him, and then just murdered him. It was an act of emotion and rage, and it wasn't calculated, it wasn't thought out. He just went, he acted on pure emotion. And I think most people can, can, can. I mean, we might, like, in our glass houses over here, look down and say, oh, no, that's terrible that he did that. But let's all take a minute and think about emotionally how would we react to a situation like that. And who knows what we would do this is of course the point when that happens that we find out oh john walker has put the serum into himself throughout the show or throughout this episode we've gotten that question would you do it would you do it we find out that he did actually find that one vial the one surviving vial that zemo didn't destroy that the flag smashers had and he was debating should i take it should i not is is it the right thing to do and inevitably he does take it we find out because he ends up whooping everybody's ass like captain america and doing things that he just couldn't do before however i will say that after in episode one he did quite a few captain america ish things that i don't feel like a regular human being that wasn't enhanced could have done and he he wasn't supposed to be have been enhanced at that point but he was doing some stuff like the thing i mentioned in my review throwing the shield and just catching that guy way over there who the fuck can do that nobody's doing that and just holding his own against these super soldiers, I don't feel like he could have done that. So the show was already kind of treating him or putting him where he could stand toe-to-toe with some of these characters. Now he's just, like, decimating them that he took the serum. So I don't know. He was already kind of fighting like a super soldier in a way. I wish they had just had him get his ass kicked a bit more there in the uh, other episode or when it's featured him fighting a bit more against these super soldiers. But whatever, I digress. But, yeah, the... I don't think I think these flag smashers are going to be not be the main villains, and if they are, I th- I hope they're not. Honestly, unless they end up, I don't know what they're going to do. There's two episodes left of this show, unless they're going to introduce some other entity altogether, or I don't know because they're trying to keep us sympathetic with these flag smashers. Unless they're going to just do something. Which, I mean, the fact that they, if they're going to do something that they just can't come back from, I was going to say, but they kind of have. They've blown up buildings with people in them and murdered people. They've kind of gone too far at this point. You know, they've gone beyond the point of no return, if you will. Um, the show hasn't really focused on it, but the fact of the matter is, is they have. They've, they've committed atrocities at this point murdering tons of people that were not involved or, or 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 at least loosely involved with these things these injustices that they they don't want that they don't like that they're fighting against and I, I find it hard to get behind characters like that the only way you're going to do that for me is to really truly show me their personal personal selves and have me sympathize with them i feel like they have done that with john walker i feel like when we see him we really know what this character's thinking we know what he's all about when we first saw him in the end of episode one i thought well is this goofy guy the mask doesn't even fit but then in episode two we got so much more of this character we got to know who he is not just we got to see how he projects himself to the public but then how he is when he's alone or just like his closest friends he is not a bad guy he wants to do the right thing he truly does, and that goes into why he takes the super serum. He's thinking, 
you know, I want to do the right thing, but how can I do the right thing? How can I compete against these these enhanced human beings, these super soldiers, these superheroes or super villains when I'm just a man? I'm just a man. How am I supposed to stand up to that? I can't fight unless I get on their level, and that's why he takes the serum. Now, what the serum does to him in the long run, if it brings out something more, something more sinister in him, we don't know. We'll find out. He did bash a guy's fucking head in, but I feel like that was more emotion than anything. I am interested to see if the next episode is really going to go with that, roll with it, and like have the world vilify him because he did this thing. And that, I think, would be a great way to go about it. The, the world, I'm sure, because it showed everybody with their phones and everything, the world is going to vilify him and, and call him terrible things because he did this thing. But we've seen why he did it. I mean, we know more about this guy. We know he's not a bad guy. He made a bad decision. He acted on emotion. He killed someone. And, you know, he killed a terrorist, honestly, in a conflict. You know, way went about it, maybe not so much, but it, it was an act of emotion that I think we can all relate to in some way. I mean, I've never murdered anybody, but, you know, I've never been put in that situation either. But, you know, I think that is something we can relate to. That is why I do hope that, that John Walker, and I do think he is an end up going to end up being some sort of villain, and I think he could be a very compelling villain villain i know he's based on a character in the comic book series i don't know much about that character i can't really comment on where that character goes how faithful this is to him i don't know i know we got two episodes left and i still don't know really what the overarching story in this show is so they got two episodes to really ratchet things up now supposedly fifth episode it's just come come to light that something big or some big reveal not a reveal but a, a big uh, a cameo if you will or a, some character that i assume we all know is going to be showing up in episode five i don't know how much of a game changer that's going to be we will find out next week i guess but as of right now i will say this episode was it better than last episode yes was it better than the episodes that came before it? Mm, it's kind of in line. I wish this had been episode three. I mean, I know that there was some stuff that happened in episode three that we needed to know, but I wish this, the way this episode was, what happened here, how much we got out of this, was what we got out of episode three. Because now going into episode five, knowing that we have episode five, episode six to tie this story up, I don't know, you know, how quick they're going to do it. Usually the last episode is more of like the, the end itself. So now really episode five. By the end of episode five, if we're sitting in the same boat here, not really knowing where they're, we're going, what's going on, that's a problem to me because that means they're going to cram in a whole lot into episode six. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll find out. I did like the direction that this episode went. It started off a bit slow for sure, but it did end on a real high note. Now, that is a problem we have with TV shows sometimes. You'll have a lackluster episode. They'll have something just kick-ass awesome in the end. That kick-ass awesome few seconds does not make up for the 45 minutes that preceded it. That's not what we got here. That's kind of last week's situation. Here we did, we had a really banger of an ending, and we had an interesting middle part that worked up to it. A bit slow, as I said in the beginning, but that's okay. You know, we got some some building in the beginning, and it worked up to all the, the, the interesting stuff later in the episode. So overall, yes, I like this one. Better than last week's. I think it's more in line. I'm not going to say better than episode one and two, but it is in line with that story. I feel like last week's was more of a, a road bump, if you will. Hopefully coming or a speed bump hopefully coming up this next week we get more of this week in the previous show and they just kind of show us tell us what the fuck is going on in this world because right now we don't really know i mean i'm speculating yeah i know john walker's in it and he could be a bad guy but i hope they don't try and like turn him from total good guy to bad guy within two episodes i feel like that'd be quick i don't know We'll see. Who knows? I did like this episode. I recommend checking it out, especially if you've watched the other ones up to this point. It's worth it. It does get back things back on track. I'm looking forward to next week. Hope you guys are too. Check out the channel then next week, and uh, I'll have my review for episode five around this time next week. 
And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that next week I'll be able to tell you that it continues on that same trajectory of, you know, upward momentum and interesting stuff. And I am honestly really interested to see what happens with the two characters I never thought I'd really care that much about, John Walker and Zemo. Especially John Walker. I'm really curious to see what's going to go on with that character. Uh, I guess Bucky and Sam, yeah, I want to see what happens with them too. But anyway, that's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 4. And hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you feel like it. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for checking out this clip from the JarCast Movie Podcast. If you like this and want more, then check out the Jacob Anders Review YouTube channel, where you can also find movie reviews every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. You can also listen to the entire podcast on all major podcasting platforms such as Spotify, Google, and iTunes. So if you prefer audio, whichever one is your preferred, check it out there. Once again, I really appreciate it, and thanks for watching. And as always, stay sexy, YouTube.